Hi, and welcome to Chapter 7, Cost of Sales, Accruals and Prepayments, an exam-critical chapter that can be summed up with one key word, matching. We saw right at the start of your studies that one of the key concepts of our accounting is that of the accruals or the matching concept. And it represents the idea that if we're preparing a set of accounts, a profit or loss for the year ended, whatever, the 31st of December, then regardless of what cash I've paid, I will always need to show a full 12 months worth of expenses. If it's a 12 month year, I want to match my income and expenses to that 12 month period, regardless of any cash paid or received. We use accruals accounting, not cash based accounting. So this chapter is all about matching, matching expenses to the correct period and indeed matching the cost of sales to whatever it is we've sold. So we can actually ring fence this chapter into two sections. We're going to start with a very quick look at cost of sales and then spend much longer on the exam critical accruals and prepayments, making sure we are matching our expenses to our 12 month period. OK, let's start at the beginning, though, with the idea of cost of sales. Now, you know that in a profit or loss, we always start with the same three lines. Revenue, that sales, less cost of sales is gross profit. Now, up until now, we've cheated a bit and the cost of sales has often been assumed to be purchases. But that isn't strictly true. Cost of sales represents the cost of whatever goods it is we've sold. Some people know this as the cost of goods sold. What I want to do is to match to my sales figure the cost of the exact same units that I've sold that year to work out the gross profit on those goods. So how do I calculate cost of sales? Well, there is a little mantra that you need to memorize. Learn this well. Cost of sales is a business's opening inventory plus purchases, less closing inventory. Opening inventory plus purchases, less closing inventory. Now, this table also includes something called carriage inwards. We're going to talk about that a little bit more later. It's effectively part of your purchase cost. But learn that little rhyme. The cost of what we've sold is our opening inventory plus our purchases, less our closing inventory. I can pretty much guarantee you'll need to do that calculation in your long form question one, using our purchases and our inventories to get the cost of what we've sold. But why? Why do we need to calculate cost of sales in this way? Well, the best way to see it in action is to show you the quick example underneath, where in fact, we start by getting it wrong. And as we build it up, you'll see that the whole point of that cost of sales working is to match to revenue the cost of the same units that we've sold. So let's have a little look at the umbrella shop though. We're told that the umbrella shop's year end is the 30th of September. On the very first day of the year, we're going to start the story with no opening inventory, nothing on their shelves at all. But during the following year, they purchased 30,000 umbrellas at a total cost of £60,000. Well, again, you don't need to be a genius to spot. Those umbrellas have cost us £2 each. We then resell each of those umbrellas for £5 each. Now, very simply, you can see that if we're selling an umbrella for five pounds that has cost us two pounds, then for each umbrella, we are making a profit of three pound. Profit of three pound for every umbrella that we sell. Now, during the year, we managed to sell 20,000 umbrellas for five pounds each. We got total revenue of 100,000 pounds. But remember, We'd bought 30,000 umbrellas. Although we didn't have any at the start of the year, if we bought 30,000 and only sold 20,000, then there must be closing inventory of 10,000 umbrellas, each of which cost us £2. So, 
Let's now pull together this company's profit or loss. But I want to start by getting it wrong. If we were to ignore that little rhyme for cost of sales and instead begin our profit or loss with revenue less purchases is gross profit, then I'd take my revenue from selling 20,000 umbrellas, £100,000, and compare it to the cost of 30,000 umbrellas. They cost me 60,000 in total. So I would only be showing a profit of 40,000 pounds, which doesn't feel right. Because if I know I've sold 20,000 umbrellas and made a profit of three pounds per umbrella, surely my profit should be 60,000 pounds. We have got a mismatch. I am not showing the cost of the units I've sold. I'm showing the cost of everything I've bought. 30,000 units, but I haven't sold all of them. I have not matched that expense to the income. So we correct it. The first three lines of our profit or loss should really be revenue less cost of sales equals gross profit. And as we're just starting to learn, cost of sales is always calculated as our opening inventory plus purchases less closing inventories. I started with nothing on my shelves, so my opening inventory is zero. I bought 30,000 units for 60,000 pounds, but I haven't sold 10,000 of them. Now the 10,000 umbrellas I haven't sold cost two pounds each, 20,000 pounds, which means the cost of umbrellas sold, the cost of sales is 40,000. Well, of course it is, because if I sold 20,000 umbrellas, they each cost me two pounds, so 40,000 in total. Now I am matching to revenue the cost of the units that I've sold. Revenue less cost of sales is the 60,000 pounds of profit that we were expecting. 20,000 umbrellas sold at a profit of three pounds each. Okay. Let's take this example a little bit further on though and see what happens in the following year. In the next year, we know the umbrella company starts with opening inventory of 10,000 umbrellas that cost two pounds each. They've got 20,000 pounds of umbrellas on their shelf. In the following year, they then buy another 40,000 umbrellas. Added to the 10,000 on the shelf, They've got 50,000 umbrellas now. Notice though that the cost of these umbrellas is 95,000. So they've obviously gone up a little from the cost of two pound each last year. These 40,000 umbrellas cost slightly more per unit. But we had 10,000, bought another 40,000, and then we sell 45,000 umbrellas. We sell them for a total of 230,000, which means I must have 5,000 umbrellas left on my shelves at the end of the year. I started with 10, bought another 40, but have sold 45,000 umbrellas. Now the 5,000 umbrellas left at the end of the year had a total cost of 12,000. You don't need to check it, just trust the number. So how do we work out the profit or loss in year two? Well, the easy bit, I sold 45,000 umbrellas for 230,000. But what I'm interested in is what those 45,000 umbrellas cost me. And I can work that out with my opening inventory plus purchases, less closing inventory. The 10,000 umbrellas that I started with, we know had cost 20,000 pounds, two pounds each. I then know I purchased another 40,000 umbrellas for 95,000, but I haven't sold 5,000 of them that had cost 12,000. Opening inventory plus purchases less closing inventory in dollars or units should tell me the cost of the 45,000 units that I did sell. Cost of sales, 103,000. In year two, Umbrella will have a gross profit of £127,000. 
Okay, so you get the idea. Let's learn that formula and we've nailed it. There's a little interactive question over the page for you to have a go at. On the 1st of January, Grand Union Food Stores has opening inventory valued at £6,000. Opening inventory or opening stock, 6000 During the year, it purchased more goods at a cost of £50,000 and it sold some goods for a total of 80000 the cost of the goods in its closing inventory, what we hadn't sold by the end of the year, £12,500. I've got all the information I need to complete the first three lines of my profit or loss. Revenue less cost of sales is gross profit. Now, clearly, my revenue is the £80,000 I was given. That's what I sold some units for. But what about the cost of sales? Well, we're learning this little working now. Cost of sales is always your opening inventory plus your purchases for the year, less anything you haven't yet sold, your closing inventories. I don't have any information about the units, but I don't need it. I can do it all in pounds. Opening inventory is 6,000 pounds plus my purchases of £50,000, so there's £56,000 of stuff on my shelf. But if I haven't sold £12,500 by the end of the year, then the cost of what I did sell must be £53,500. Sorry, £43,500. And that's the figure to slide back up into the profit or loss. Don't forget the brackets, it's revenue, less cost of sales to give us a gross profit of 36,500. Okay, so there's the answer to the question, 36,500. Now there's nothing too tricky in that. So to liven it up a little bit, I just want to add in the idea of carriage inwards and carriage outwards. Now, I apologise for this ancient accounting terminology. Clearly, we're a little bit beyond horse and carriages nowadays, but this is just an old-fashioned phrase for delivery costs. Delivery inwards, when you're having goods delivered in from your suppliers, and the cost of delivering goods to your customers. Delivery outwards or carriage outwards. Now, it's interesting to note that these two delivery charges are dealt with in very different ways in our profit or loss. But an easy way to explain this is with a nice quick example that we are all painfully aware of. Let's pretend for a moment that I want to buy this book. So of course, like everybody does nowadays, I go straight onto Google, straight to Amazon, and I find the book I want. Sure enough, I find it on sale from two different sellers. The first seller is selling my book for £10, but then I find another seller that's selling it for only £7. Excellent. Which one shall I go to? Well, presumably I'll buy it from the second seller, £7. But you all know what will happen. As soon as you click on checkout, all of a sudden there is a delivery charge of £3 on that book. If I'd bought it from the first supplier, they were selling it with free delivery. So which one shall I buy it from? £10 with free delivery or £7 and £3 delivery? Well, quite frankly, we just don't care. It doesn't matter who I buy it from, it is going to cost me £10 to get that book in my hands. And that's the point of carriage inwards, delivery charges when you're having the goods delivered to you. Whether they are shown as part of the purchase figure or split out separately, it doesn't matter. As far as we're concerned, one way or the other, this book has cost us £10 to purchase. And hence, when we are working out our cost of sales and we need to add in the purchases figure to our opening inventory, that purchases should always include any carriage inwards. Any delivery cost to have the goods delivered to our business forms part of purchases 
and hence cost of sales will effectively lock it to that purchase's figure. But that's very different when it comes to carriage outwards. When we pay to have goods delivered to our customers, this forms part of our distribution costs. And crucially, this is further down in my profit or loss, below the gross profit figure. Carriage outwards, delivery to our customers, is treated as a distribution cost below gross profit. So, although they are very similar expenses, they live in very different places in our profit or loss. Carriage inwards forms part of cost of sales, carriage outwards part of distribution. OK, there's a lovely little example, just to see that one in action, Gwyntring. Gwyntring imports and resells clocks. He pays for both the cost of delivering the cost from his supplier to us, that's what we call carriage inwards, we'll lock that to the purchases figure, and he also pays for the cost of delivering them to his customers, carriage outwards, but we know that forms part of distribution. Now, on the first day of the year, the 1st of July 2005, his opening inventory of clocks was £17,000. During the year, he purchased more clocks for £75,000, although incurred carriage inwards of £2,000. That £2,000 needs to lock itself to purchases. Effectively, the cost of purchasing these clocks is £77,000. We then resold the clocks for a total of £162,100. There are other business expenses of 56000 sorry, hiding behind there, and that excludes the carriage outwards, the distribution costs of 2500 Our closing inventory of clocks is £15,400. Now we've got all the information we need to complete Gwyntring's profit or loss. Now over the page, we've done the pro formas for you, so we simply need to drop in the relevant numbers. For example, right at the top there, revenue. We sold the clocks for £162,100. But what about the cost of the clocks we've sold, the cost of sales? Well, here's our classic working. Cost of sales is opening inventory plus purchases, less closing inventory. And that purchases would include any carriage inwards, the cost of having the goods delivered to us. Now we can clearly see from the question that our opening inventory was £17,000. The purchases of clocks were £75,000 plus £2,000 to have them delivered to us but we haven't sold clocks with a cost of 15,400, less the closing inventory, giving Gwyntring a cost of sales of 78,600 pounds. And of course, we need to remember the brackets on that cost of sales. So we've got a gross profit, 162,100, less 78,600, Gwyntring's gross profit, 83,500. But we haven't quite finished because we need to deduct from that any other business expenses, like the distribution costs, the carriage outwards. We spent two and a half thousand pounds delivering goods to our customers. Apparently there were other business expenses of 56,000. So we end up with a bottom line net profit for Gwyn Tring of £25,000. OK, well done. So a nice little example there reminding us that carriage inwards and carriage outwards live in very different places in our statement of profit or loss. Again, you'll see a handful of questions in the question bank that test your clear with that. OK, well done. So that's cost of sales done. We'll talk a little bit more about inventories later on and revisit that cost of sales working. But that's the perfect time for a break before we look at the main event of this chapter, accruals and prepayments. Thank you.